Hi, my name is Mike, and these are two cents on a game called Space Marine. Space Marine is a universe of 40k fantasy where you are a late warrior fighting in the name of the Emperor and humanity, protecting humanity and everybody else from the creatures of the warp, chaos demons, there are gods, and as well as Xenos who want to exterminate humanity and subjugate them to the rule. In Warhammer 40k Space Marine, you'll be in the shoes of Captain Titus of the Ultramarines, and you'll be accompanied by Veteran Sergeant Sidonis and a trusty asshole called Leandros. The Codex Astartes does not support this action. Try to keep up. You're all sent by your chapter on the Forge World of Gaia. What's it, Gaia? Oh, sorry, the name of the Forge World is Graia. This game was made way way before the current live politics was creeping into their little paws into video games, at least it was indication back then. Today it's basically a blood infestation if you ask me. And the bright side, this time around we are having a more friendly video game. In this game you won't be facing many armor and stuff like that, but you'll be facing one drop ship and you'll also be facing a couple of rocket ships and orc boys that likes to ride rockets. These orc boys can be shut down in a turret-like uh, section. After that you'll be proceeding and continuing throughout your game against many many infantry units. You won't be facing tanks of the enemies, you won't be facing aircraft of the enemies, you won't be facing those things. You'll be facing mostly heavy weapon emplacements that were meant by you or the enemy. Or, and then after that, it's just plain and simple uh, infantry fighting. And this is where uh, Space Marines excel at. You'll be starting with basic weapons. The basic weapons that you'll start with the knife, and then you'll get the training sword, then after that you'll get the combat axe. And if you're really into melee weapons, you will get even a Warhammer. But the Warhammer only limits you to only two weapons that, that are ranged uh, kind. So your bolt gun and your, your pistol. And I'm not seeing any reason why should you keep your Warhammer only in situations where you're in a jetpack. Where the Warhammer definitely comes in handy. But be, without the jetpack itself, the Warhammer is definitely just a burden can get uh, two additional weapons. These two additional weapons are very useful. They are two-handed and they are basically a stalker pattern uh, bolt gun, basically a sniper. And you have a vengeance launcher which is grenades that you can detonate on different button and uh, see fire firebox go all, all, all over. But you have to replace them sooner or later. First thing first, the last cannon for the sniping option. And then after that, if you want to go into a close-up, uh, you have the Melter Gun, which is bloody awesome against enemies. The Plasma Gun is one of those weapons that I haven't found much of a use, unfortunately, during the, during the campaign. And it filled one of the slots, so I didn't want it to ditch my sniper the last cannon, and I didn't want it to lose my equivalent to a shotgun, the melt the guns therefore uh, I was basically trying it out one more one time and I figured out the plasma gun wasn't it cutting it enough so I, I had ditched it at the end unfortunately the only thing that replaces the melt gun later down the line is the storm storm bolt basically that thing is pretty useful in a close up uh, burst of massive firepower to the on the enemies and it's only available at the end of the game mostly and later down, you know, down the line. In this game, you are easy to be killed if you are overextended. Basically, if you take too much damage, it will pile up pretty, pretty fast, even in normal mode. Therefore, be careful about that. And my advice is isolate enemies, keep moving, uh, shoot and move, shoot and move most of stuff. And then, if you really have to, if you charge it right, use the melee option to carve through your enemies. You'll be healing in two ways. Basically, first is a glory kill. You get a quarter kill by lowering down your basic enemies or your more advanced enemies down and uh, the red skull will appear above them. Also, you press on the keyboard E for a punch 
where the enemy is con con uh, con uh, concussed and then you can definitely go for a glory kill and take HP that way. Big note, if the enemy is in the middle of the other enemies, the other enemies can always damage you while you're performing a glory kill. Be careful about that and keep that in mind. Another way to heal yourself is by using Fury Mode. Fury Mode also gives you massive damage boost, especially in melee. And uh, this thing is being recharged by doing actions in game, killing enemies, going uh, after them, and uh, if you're passive, of course, it won't recharge. The level design is a bit linear. You won't be exploring too much, and uh, as the game progresses forward down the line, you'll be encountering a lot of lore based stuff that are pretty pretty nice and uh, definitely decorates uh, the role of Warhammer to you. Don't want to spoil too much, but you'll be facing the boss of the orcs. So the boss of the Chaos Armies. Before I spoil the end level, of course, I need to tell you that one of your guys is going to be dying. And uh, the Titlanker Leandros will be accusing you of everything wrong under the sun. We know the enemy takes great interest in your connection to chaos. Reinforcements, not just the regular guardsmen around you. While well, facing the enemies of chaos nature, uh, you'll be going with your Space Marines of the Blood Raven chapter. And the last level is... How to explain to you is a slap fight. Never. I'll be going throughout the game not to spoil something, but I have to spoil something. And then the Inquisition will appear and question your loyalty and untainted nature of your character. Titus will side to the Inquisition, go with them, and we won't be hearing from Titus for next 10 years regarding in real life timeline, because after the Space Marine was done, nobody knew what Titus, Titus Fatu is. Spoiler ahead, we are know that we know all that next year while I'm recording this, uh, it will be Space Marine too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the, the primary Space Marine kind. Uh, the primary Space Marine uh, will be uh, Captain Titus then, he'll be upgraded quote unquote to face new challenges. In the meantime, there is uh, another uh, game that came out in this universe, a spell set on Gaia Moon, and that is uh, Bolt Gun and I'll be reviewing that next time. So let me just finish up the Space Marine and tell you the good and bad things about the game. But how we live with those rules is the true test of a Space Marine. And you have failed. First, the game is lore friendly. The combat is nice to turn your brain off as well. Sometimes you just need to smash things and shoot things in order to feel better. And the bad thing is, well, the combat itself gets repetitive if you're going through the game multiple times. And there is that shit in the mission where you are uh, going into a slap fight against an enemy chaos lord. So, think of that one out. My advice is to get this game while it's on sale until before the Space Marine 2 comes out and uh, hopefully the Space Marine 2 will be untainted by the real life politics, fingers crossed, because I hate real life politics getting into games, in spite of thing. And uh, let's all hope for a better, se better sequel. So this was my pilot video, hopefully I wasn't too boring for you and uh, I'll see this was Mike signing off and I'll see you all next time.